In Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, raising documents such as sales orders and purchase orders is really straightforward. In fact, there are multiple routes to start that transaction. Uh, the quickest, because I'm here in one of the a, an appropriate role center, on my quick actions, I've got purchase order. And simply clicking that will give me a new purchase order blank document. I can also trigger this from the list page of the purchase orders. So from here, I can simply go plus new, and I will get a new blank PO card page. Or I could start the process from a specific vendor. I'll show that route at the end. So take the quick route in first, click for new purchase order. System opens up a blank purchase order card page for me with the usual structure. I've got tabs, so general fast tab and invoice details fast tab, each of which has a show more and a show less, all currently empty. On the right hand side, a fact box pane. I need to choose the vendor I wish to purchase from. Now I can do this using their code number so their unique reference in the system, or their name. In fact, the system could even find them by their city. So if I try this out, if I start typing something, the system will narrow down and suggest me entries that match that number, Fabricam. I could simply scroll down this list and choose the one that I want and click to select them. Could also start typing, in fact, just part of the name, OR, and it's gonna start narrowing things down, so worldwide importers or first up consultants because they're based in Guildford so the system narrows down at wildcards and it's uh, case insensitive by default. If it's something NOD there we go and we'll find the record that we're after. Okay so I'm going to use Fabricam. The system pulls that through and you'll see that it's pulled in their information so if I just show more the header of my document, this general fast tab, is now completed with the details for the vendor, their buy from address. It's pre filling my document date with my current work date. So my demo system is set to the 9th of April 2018. So it's pre filling dates as per that date. And it's pulled through information from the vendor's card page. So this invoice, when the order goes through and is invoiced, will be due on the end of April, the 30th of April, because down here we see it's pulled for their payment terms code of current month. So CM current month. So a lot of the information is pulled through from the vendor card page and will be populating the various fast tabs that we see down here. Some of which you may then need to change. But the idea is it minimizes how much you have to add when you start each transaction. So here I've collapsed foreign trade and prepayment, shipping and payment. It could be that we want them to deliver this order to our default address or maybe one of our locations, warehouses. So if I pick location, I can then choose the specific warehouse that I wish them to send this order to. I'll leave it as a company address for now. And I can collapse these down, show less and so on. Now I've chosen a vendor on the right hand side, my fact box, which I can remove with a little eye in a circle to give me a wider view of things. But it does actually give me some really useful overview when I start to build up the order, particularly information about my items. Um, what I see here is I've got the current position with this vendor, with this supplier, their number. I could click that. All these are flow fields. If I click that 10,000 there, that's their number. It would take me to their vendor card. I've got our current balance with them. And if I were to click these values, it will take me through to the entries that make up that figure. Underneath, I've got an overview here on these queues of how many documents do we have in progress or of that type. So I can see we've actually completed we've got 17 posted invoices, but there are five orders currently underway with this vendor. So to the actual meat of the order, if I come in here, it's defaulting to item that I'm going to purchase from them. There are other options. So it could be it's a service that I'll put through as a GL, but stay with item for now on this simple demo. And just like I had to choose the vendor with this lookup, I can use this lookup here to pick the items. And I could simply scroll down this list to find what I wish to purchase. 
but it's much faster if I start giving it the number, so the item number, start typing it, the system will narrow down as I type to find just exactly what I want. I want that Paris guest chair, simply click that line or press enter and it puts on the order for me. I then might need to specify which location they want them to deliver it to or I could leave that blank. In this demo I'll leave it blank. Normally that will be hard coded for you. You'll choose it on the vendor card and it will flow through. When I've chosen my location I say how many I want, so a quantity of one. And we note the system's pulled through the last purchase cost and it's using that as a default cost. It could be for this time they've advised me there's been a slight price increase, so actually it's 98, just update it. And my order now is starting to take shape. I can see on the lines I actually you can manage in a simple scenario, you can manage the whole process from the purchase order. So I see I've got one to receive, nothing yet received, one to invoice, nothing yet invoiced. Same idea of the second line, click the one down, it'll default to item, but I could change that and I move across and start typing. So I could use the name of it rather than number, LON for that London swivel chair, just press enter, pulls that through, tab across, that's nice and quick, give it a quantity and it pulls the price for me. The price is coming for the last invoice price on the item card. If at any point we have actually got contractually agreed prices, such as price breaks for example, the system could advise me. So with the right line selected for the London civil chair down here, this fact box in the fact box pane would give me direct access to the item card if I click that blue number there. It tells me the current availability and if we had any prices in the system, so say we've got a contract contractually agreed price that if I buy 10 of these I get a different, uh, I get a better price for it, then it would show a 1 there, telling me I have got one special price available. Same with line discounts. All those would be set up on the vendor card usually or on the item card and then would transfer automatically onto this order. So when I qualify for it, the system would apply that better price. There's lots more detail on the use of special prices and also different types of orders such as blanket purchase orders that's all available in our trade course. Information available on that from the website or your account manager. So on this simple example, that might be it for my order. I've got my two lines in place and the system is ready for me to perhaps fill in expected receipt date if they advise me of when they could deliver these by. Otherwise, the system will actually take a guess of when it thinks things will be delivering, so same day delivery in this case. All of those values that help it calculate when we could receive those goods can be set on, for example, on the item, on the vendor, and on our warehouse potentially, so that they build up uh, an effective number of days to advise me on when it, the system calculates I could have my goods. So for example, if a supplier always takes two weeks, we can have it include that value in the calculations. So now I'm ready to release my order. So if I'm only doing part of the process and I'm using warehousing, at this point I simply need to release this and send this off to the supplier to say that I want the goods. So up here on the ribbon, if I click more options, and I also show more, we see the current status of the order is open. Open documents are a work in progress, so they're not viewed by the system as completed, they're not yet got visibility to the warehouse for example. Here if I go actions release, the status changes to released and this is now visible to the warehouse, people know this is due in on the dates we've set, the expected receipt dates. If I go to print, got the option to print out a hard copy or send using the document sending profile that's been set up on the vendor. And it will confirm, yes, we're going to email this out with a PDF attachment. I say OK. If I've got my SMTP settings set correctly, this will email out to that supplier using the details in the system. This is just a demo system, so I'll cancel. We also have the option to print out. If I come back to this page a second time, it will remember my options from before, but I've got the option to archive these documents as I create them and log the interactions 
if I wish to. So if I simply hit preview, we see the document that I'm about to send out to the supplier requesting the goods, which I can download a local copy and then print easily or attach to an email and store or use as I wish. And for most people that's it because this is now released and I've raised my PO. A different person will then take over and generate the warehouse receipts at the appropriate time and somebody else, usually in finance, would handle the purchase invoice side of things. You can actually manage all of those from this one centralized document from this PO. You see here we have quantity to receive, quantity received, quantity invoiced and quantity invoiced. So if I have then received the goods and I wish to receipt them from the PO rather than a warehouse receipt, I can do this. If I simply go up to actions and then on posting, I have various options. I'm going to do this separately, but you can receive invoice or receive an invoice. So I'm going to note that we've received these goods. If I say OK, that's now generated a posted purchase receipt in the system. I can see that from the lines down here because I've got nothing left to receive and a quantity of one received. I've not yet invoiced though. Up on the command bar, we have navigate and through documents, I've got quick access to those documents. There are no invoices yet, but there are receipts. If I click receipts, we have that one receipt line. If I go manage and view, I can view that document. So I'm now on my posted purchase receipt that we just generated from that order number that you see there. So that I come out of this. The only problem with doing this sort of flow through is you have lots of pages popped out. So escape the back arrow or the gray part to close things down and get back to where I actually was, which was the purchase order document. So again, if I wish to handle the invoicing directly from the purchase order, I can do that. Nothing's been invoiced yet. I've got the paper in front of me. I need to give it the vendor invoice number. The little red star shows your mandatory fields. This will error on posting and will not post unless I complete a value here. So I've taken that from the document that I see in front of me. That's the actual invoice they've submitted to us. This must be a unique value for this vendor. And then I go to actions, posting, and I can post. This time I'll invoice. It wouldn't matter if I hit receive an invoice in this scenario because I've received everything, but it would if you were part receipting. So I'm going to invoice, OK. Now this purchase order 106008 will be deleted because it's fully received and fully invoiced through this method. No data is lost, all the data has been transferred to the posted purchase receipt and the posted purchase invoice. If I say yes to go and see that invoice, so on my posted purchase invoice document now, it confirms all the details, confirms the lines of the order. If I wish to navigate through to see the purchase receipts, I can do that with the correct line selected that interests you choose more options, choose line, and now we have item receipt lines that we can get through to. If I click that, there is only one receipt line in this case, and from there I can show document. So from my posted purchase invoice, I can navigate through to look at the posted purchase receipt just to check other information. So I close those down. We see on my list of purchase orders, that order has indeed been deleted. 106008 is no longer in this list of purchase orders. So that was a simple flow through, managing it all from the purchase order document. There are other options and other features which are all detailed in the trade course that's available from us here at Technology Management.